Welcome back. So this section is about integrating Langchain with Llama 2 and Chroma. So this is called orchestration because Langchain essentially connects the dots and does a lot of heavy lifting behind the scenes. So in this uh, section, we'll first take a closer look at Langchain, followed by an understanding of how Langchain works with Chroma and Llama 2. And finally, we'll build a fully blown, fully fledged chatbot. So this is going to be an interesting project for us to bring everything together and build a typical chatbot interface to interact with a PDF. And behind the scenes, this is orchestrated by Langchain by bringing the context from Chroma and sending the right prompt to Llama 2. So let's get started. So Langchain is essentially a framework that integrates a variety of external tools to orchestrate the prompt engineering that's needed to get the desired outcome from the LLM. So it is a layer that, sit, that sits in between your application and the LLM and it also manages a variety of building blocks that are essential to build applications that are uh, like chatbots or summarization tools or Q&A applications and so on. So Langchain essentially deals with four key building blocks of an LLM application. The first one is the data source. So data source could be anything from structured to unstructured, which means PDFs to CSVs to SQL database or even searching the web. And then word embeddings, as we have seen, is essentially the mechanism of converting the data into embeddings or vectors that preserve or retain the contextual meaning of the content. And then to store and retrieve these vectors, it also interacts with a variety of vector databases, including Chroma. And finally, it can connect the dots and uh, constructs the right prompt to send that to the LLM. And it can deal with a variety of LLMs. So let's understand these building blocks a little bit better. So as I mentioned, data sources can, can come from anywhere. Uh, for example, you can upload a PDF or you can use a CSV file or it can come from images or even structured data like a SQL database or a NoSQL database. And Langchain has built-in libraries to deal with all of these data sources. It can even browse the web and uh, get the appropriate data that can be used with the NLM. So once we have the data sources, then obviously comes the word embeddings. And uh, these data sources need to be chunked or split into multiple parts and then pass them through a word embeddings model to generate the appropriate vectors. So Langchain is capable of converting them into vectors. But as we know, these vectors are essentially based on embedding models. So LLM can only understand the uh, vectors and not exactly text. So that's the reason why we need to first pass the data through a word embeddings model to generate vectors and store them in the vector database. So how do we choose the right word embeddings model? Well. When you are actually using a specific LLM with Langchain, it is capable of picking up the most appropriate word embeddings model associated with your LLM. So this makes it Lang this ma this makes Langchain extremely powerful because you don't have to really choose the actual embeddings model. Of course, you are you have the option of choosing uh, an embeddings model but you can safely leave that to Langchain because it is capable of handpicking the best of the embeddings model that is appropriate for the LLM. So these LLMs uh, or, or the embedding models will be used uh, automatically to convert your input source that is a PDF or a CSV file uh, into vectors. Now, when it comes to vectors, we have seen 
Chroma, which is a vector database. So LangChain automates all the uh, heavy lifting that is required uh, to create an index, to ingest the data, and then querying the uh, vector database and so on with very high level API. So you can use a variety of vector databases, including Chroma, Milvus, VV8, or uh, hosted uh, vector databases like Pinecone. So LangChain supports a broad range of vector databases. So that is the next pillar. And then finally, the last one, the fourth pillar of the LangChain application is the LLM itself. Now you can use, again, a diverse set of LLMs starting from OpenAI to Cohere to AI21 or uh, uh, Anthropic Cloud or Hugging Face and LangChain supports all of them. So to go back and do a quick recap, basically LangChain is a framework that will help us build LLM-based applications by orchestrating everything from data source to the LLM and in between to help us uh, focus on the application rather than do the plumbing of uh, fetching the data, generating word embeddings and so on. So in the next demo, I'm going to introduce LangChain with Llama. So we'll actually see how we can integrate uh, a LangChain with Llama 2 running in the Vulture GPU stack uh, as a part of the Hugging Face text generation inference container. All right. So for this demo, make sure you follow the steps. Uh, there is a setup.sh, which contains the commands to launch the Docker container running the Hugging Face text gen inference container. So run this, and then you also find a requirements.txt, which contains all the Python modules required uh, for this demo, for this lab. So make sure you follow the readme file associated with the lab uh, to finish these steps. But this assumes you have already deployed or rather launched the uh, HFTGI, that is Hugging Face Text Gen Inference Container, and you have already installed all the appropriate Python modules. Okay, so let's get started. Now, it all starts from importing the module, so let's first import the appropriate module, all right? So now we are basically importing the Hugging Face Text Gen Inference library from the LangChain module. Uh, it's a good idea to set the warnings uh, to be ignored. Uh, you may see a few warnings, so to keep this clean, I'm just ignoring the warnings. And then we'll set the URI to the Vulture GPU stack's public IP address. So this might change based on uh, your IP address, so make sure you update this. And then we are going to create an object of the LLM. So here, if you notice, we are creating an instance of Hugging, hugging Face Text Gen Inference class, and we are passing the URI, and then we get the LLM object. And after that, it is as simple as invoking the LLM and printing the output. So now you can directly pass the prompt with print uh, followed by the LLM and the prompt, and we are going to get rid of the uh, empty lines before and after the uh, response. So let's go ahead and execute, and there we go. So this is the simplest LangChain code that you can write to interact with Llama 2 running on Hugging Face Text Gen Inference Container. So the beauty is, if you change the model, uh, you are still using the same code for a couple of reasons. One, we are using the container that is wrapping the model, so the model is never exposed, but if you're actually using LangChain for advanced scenarios, then you need to tell LangChain what model you're using. So we'll, we'll, we'll come to that. So that was the first mechanism. Now let's go ahead and create another uh, notebook. So this time I'm going to show you how to create a chain. 
and uh, a very simple chain and and it is going to basically uh let's call this llama2 uh lang chain with prompt so we're going to create a prompt template so how does this work well everything remains the same but we are going to import some additional modules which will help us deal with the prompt template so uh, we are now importing the prompt template module and also the uh, str output parser so that's our import section and i want to suppress any warnings that we may get so i'm going to run this as well and then we will initialize the llm to the hugging face endpoint the inference server endpoint and i'm going to initialize the template that is very specific to llama2 now from the previous tutorials and videos uh, you may recall that llama2 has a very specific prompt template and this is how it, it actually looks like so now we are initializing that in a variable and this will help us handcraft the prompt in a in a format that llama2 expects and this is going to play an important role in uh, getting the right response so once we have the basic template defined we will initialize this object called the prompt so we will now initialize this and then we are going to define the roles and the actual prompt so now uh, let's define that so here we are going to populate the role uh, as a machine learning engineer who is teaching high school students and then the text is basically explaining what is ai in two or three sentences so this gets populated into the prompt uh, at runtime so how does this look like well if you actually print the format langchain will translate this into a very well defined prompt so it looks something like this so it has now replace the role with the with the actual uh, prompt so now it's time to construct the chain now this is why langchain has a chain in it uh, right in the name so now we are constructing the chain so basically what this actually means is first create the prompt and then pass it on to the llm and get the output into the output parser if you are familiar with unix this closely resembles the unix pipeline concept except that this is actually called as the langchain expression language so this language is very specific to langchain obviously and helps us create a prompt or rather create a chain that basically helps us connect all the dots now as we go along we'll also see how we can pass on context to the prompt so we can actually implement rag so uh, once we construct the prompt or rather the chain it's time to invoke it so invoking is pretty straightforward we'll call chain.invoke and uh, we are going to pass the role and the text because they are actually uh, passed at the runtime so let's go ahead and run this and in uh, just a few seconds it comes back with a pretty interesting answer that explains ai to high school kids so that's exactly how you basically deal with llama2 through langchain now if you see we have followed a very specific format so we first construct the template and then we define the prompt uh, from that and then we define the role and the text and we created a chain and the chain obviously follows the sequence of first the prompt and then the llm and then the output and then we invoke the chain and we get back the result so that's how 
you basically deal with uh, Lama 2 through Langchain. So, in the next demo, we'll actually see how we can construct more complex prompts by bringing in the context from uh, an external PDF and then use things like Chroma uh, to store the embeddings and retrieve the context. So, let's switch to the next demo where we will integrate Langchain with Chroma and Lama 2. All right, we're going to build an interesting demo. So, there is a, a, a famous speech by Steve Jobs delivered at uh, Stanford in 2005. It was a commencement address and it's very popular. It has a lot of depth and a lot of advice uh, for students. So what we'll actually do is we'll take this PDF and build a bot that can answer questions from this PDF. So in a lot of ways, this is actually RAG because we're going to retrieve the context from the PDF and then augment it and then send it to the LLM. But instead of doing it manually, like the way we have done in the previous demos, we will leverage Langchain uh, to do most of the heavy lifting. So now we are going to build a rag pipeline with Langchain. So let's get started. Now I'm going to basically import the modules that are important. Uh, so this is going to basically uh, help us read the PDF and then we have the Hugging Face specific modules uh, and we are using Chroma and the STD output parser. Apart from that, we're also using Joblib and uh, OS because we're going to deal with file system and then serialization. I'll come to that as we go along. So once we have the modules initialized or imported, let's uh, initialize some variables. So the first set of variables that I'm going to initialize are obviously the uh, URI and then the model ID. Now this is required because Langchain will need this to handpick the best embeddings model. So we'll uh, initialize model ID and then we will initialize the NLM pointing to the hugging face inference uh, uh, server URL. And we are setting the max tokens to 2000. Then comes in the prompt template. So we are going to basically define a prompt template like how we did that, how we did uh, that in the previous demo. So we will uh, define the prompt template. And then obviously we are going to initialize the prompt from the prompt template. So this is going to help us uh, pass on the context and then the question at runtime. And then the next step is to read the PDF, which is available within the data directory. So it's here. If you actually see the PDF is available here, it's the same PDF. It's available in the code repo. So you can uh, basically create a directory and upload this. Uh, so once we have the reader, then what we're going to do is we will basically enumerate all the pages and uh, get the raw text. So this is going to basically read the PDF and it extracts the text. So let's actually print the raw text variable to see what it has, right? So this is the entire content from the PDF. So we don't need this. Uh, once we have the PDF converted to raw text, what we'll actually do is to split that into multiple chunks. So here, we again uh, make use of the character text splitter uh, class of the Langchain module uh, by giving it the separator, the chunk size, which is like 500 words, and then the chunk overlap, 500 characters, and then the chunk overlap is about 20. Uh, length is... Uh, what we basically use uh, as the as the chunk size 
uh, and uh, the length function basically defines. Okay, so now let's let's convert the raw text into multiple chunks. So the text splitter basically takes the text and then it creates multiple chunks based on the parameters here. So again, just to make sure uh, what we are doing and and uh, to follow along, let's print the text. So uh, this is the the first element. Let's print out the fourth. So you can actually see how uh, it is breaking the raw text into multiple chunks. So this is important to perform the indexing and querying within the vector database. Now what we'll actually do is, we're going to define a simple if condition and I'll explain why we need that. So what we're going to do is to basically generate the embeddings for the, uh, for the text that we have uh, split or created chunks from. So instead of repeating this process every time, uh, which is expensive by the way, because we are now reading multiple chunks and then we are going to send that to the, uh, to the embeddings model and uh, generate the, uh, generate the uh, uh, embeddings for that. So instead of doing that every time, we are going to basically do that once. So that's the reason why we are now using uh, the if condition. So only if we have the embeddings file in place, we will read from it. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and generate the embeddings. So that's how this function or rather this code block is helpful. So once we read the embeddings, we are going to create a vector store and this is where we'll use the langchain functionality of calling chroma from texts. So here we are using uh, the vector store and uh, we are basically uh, using the text and the embeddings that are created from the previous step. So this will populate or rather ingest the text chunks and the associated embeddings into the vector store. And instead of generating it every time, we are doing it once and then storing that or rather serializing that into a file so we can avoid that. So this is going to take a minute uh, just to populate within the vector database of Chroma. And once we have that, then the next step is to define what is called as a retriever. And this is the retriever in the retrieval augmented generation pipeline. So we'll define this as the retriever and then finally it's time for us to define the chain. So the chain is going to be populated uh, uh, later on but we'll define this immediately after uh, implementing the retriever. So now we have a chain that basically gets the context based on the query and then the question that we are going to pass which is the actual query and then both of them will be used to construct the prompt and from there it goes into the NLM. So uh, if you actually see this is a pretty intuitive chain or a pipeline that we are constructing. So get the context, get the question and then send it on to the uh, prompt template and once the prompt is constructed, send it to the NLM. So let's run the query. And uh, this is going to, for example, where did Steve Jobs deliver this speech? So that's the query. And then what we'll do is just to see how the retriever works against this query, we will print this. Now, when you actually uh, use this, it, it's going to come back with multiple documents. So the first document, uh, this is actually there are three or four document chunks that are available. So this is going to be passed on as the context to the LLM. So 
somewhere in this text is the answer for the LLM to respond to this. So uh, as you can notice, this is exactly what we have done in the RAG tutorial, but now Langchain is doing that more efficiently with just one call. So let's now go ahead and invoke the query. So we will invoke and it is pretty fast. So now this comes back with uh, uh, the, the response, you know, Steve Jobs delivered this speech at Stanford. Now, if you don't have the context, then this might just hallucinate. So that's the reason why we need to implement RAG and Langchain makes it pretty straightforward and simple to implement RAG pipelines. So you can uh, send any query, for example, what was the Bible of Steve Jobs? So this is again found within the content. So when you actually send this query, so the Bible of Steve Jobs was the whole Earth catalog. Now again, this is a pretty accurate answer. So in just about few lines, we are able to implement retrieval augmented generation thanks to Langchain's integration with Chroma and Lava 2. So without having to go through the process of chunking and then generating the embeddings all by ourselves, we are letting Langchain do that. So that was a very quick walkthrough of how to integrate Langchain with Chroma Vector Database and uh, Lama 2 LLM. So in the next demo, we'll take this code and uh, turn this into a, a fully fledged uh, chatbot. Stay tuned. All right. So in the previous demo, we have seen how to bring Langchain, Llama 2 and Chroma together. Now, I want to show you how you can actually build a professional looking user interface for the chatbot. So we are moving away from the Jupyter Notebook environment to more of a browser-based interface to interact with this chatbot. So uh, you can basically ask this any question and then it's going to retrieve uh, using the same code. So it is coming back exactly from the same endpoint. Everything remains the same, but this interface is much more polished and more professional. So you can ask any question. For example, what are the three key takeaways from Steve Jobs' speech? So it's going to come back with the takeaways and you can ask any question. So who created the whole earth catalog and when? So again, all of this data is coming from the same PDF that we have used. So how do we build this? Well, in the same repo, you can find a file called chatbot.py. And here, everything is the same as the Jupyter Notebook code, except that we have now imported what is called as Gradio. So Gradio is a pretty cool uh, toolkit to create chatbot-like interfaces. So if you see, uh, everything remains the same. We are defining some constants uh, that has the URI, model ID, embeddings file, and so on. And then we are initializing the LLM uh, for Langchain, and then we are constructing the prompt, uh, and then we are extracting the text from the PDF. And once it is done, we go ahead and uh, create the embeddings, and then we define the main chatbot function. So this chatbot um, accepts the query and optionally history, and then again, generates the context, and then uh, passes the question to the Langchain uh, expression language pipeline and then invokes the query and returns the output. And finally, we have the chat interface. And this is where you can basically populate some uh, existing questions as examples and you can uh, uh, define some parameters. You can look up the Gradio documentation. Uh, it's a very, very powerful tool. And that's all with some a bit of cleanup and then restructuring of the code we just converted the uh, basic Jupyter Notebook uh, code into more of a chatbot. So this is a very powerful mechanism to build 
chatbots. You know, behind the scenes, we have, of course, Langchain, Llama 2, and uh, Chroma, and of course, a word embeddings model. So this is uh, just the beginning. Langchain is pretty comprehensive. It has uh, a lot of moving parts to it. We just scratched the surface, and hopefully you, you understand how you can bring multiple things together to build sophisticated chatbots or summarization tools and other LLM-based applications uh, using Langchain. So in the next section, we will take a look at fine-tuning. That's going to be another interesting topic. I'm going to introduce a, a simple tool for you to implement fine-tuning. Stay tuned. Thank you.